some 10 years and um, in various countries through, uh, then I was invited to become a facilitator. So I've been running monthly programs since 2011 in the Middle East, in North Africa. And then the bit that was closest to my heart was to, to start running programs in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. <clears throat> so um, it's been a great privilege for me to do that. And um, yeah, that's that's a bit of us and what brings us to be with you today. Um, and uh, Julie, anything else you want to say about Mowgli at this point? Yes, no, I mean, the, the, the topic of this um, webinar is not mentoring, but uh, I mean, we are a mentoring organization, so we work on, you know, well-being and resilience uh, through mentoring. Uh, so just a quick word to say that Mowgli uh, Mentoring is a specialized mentoring organization, so mentoring is really our core. And we run programs, uh, you know, across uh, MENA uh, and Sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you can check out our website if you want to know more and I can send you more information uh, after the webinar. Thanks very much. Um, what we have learned, uh, what we do know through our programs and through supporting our participants is that resilience is key for the likes of entrepreneurs, um, women leaders, youth development and leaders in uh, conservation and sustainability. So resilience is very much a recurring theme. Also, for my part, I, I also do some uh, work in the UK with injured um, veterans. So those who've been in the military and who are transitioning into a new life. And um, so there's a lot of work we do there with, with um, well-being and resilience. And so, you know, a lot of what you hear today will have um, foundation in the experience with Modley and also with the veterans in the UK. <clears throat> so, um, right up front, what I want to say, uh, one of the things I want to say is, please do interact with us. This is, a, I don't know about you, this is a new platform for me. So, um, uh, please do use the chat function. Please do raise your hand if there's something you want to um, uh, ask uh, verbally. Um, we can bring you on, onto the stage and that would be fantastic for me so that you get to hear somebody else's voice other than mine. Um, so, you know, please do that and as best we can, we will include you. So please use the chat. Please just tell us, tell us how it's going. I'm also going to be asking you questions. So, however many of you are out there, um, I want to get your occasion to say, please put in discuss on the, on the side. Um, your response to this question. So I'm going to be asking you to, to interact. Um, but the more it comes from you, the better. What, I, um, have put, I have put in the chat, uh, I ask people to tell us uh, where they come from, their name. So please do, do tell yeah. us. We want to know who's in the room because we can't see you. It's very frustrating, but we want to see, we want to know who, who's down there. Yeah, who's there? Because, you know, it depends about people. I know technology is a wonderful thing, but um, really, as long as it's enabling uh, connections between people, and that's certainly what we're all about at Mowgli, is, cre is um, creating those connections and supporting those connections. Uh, what else? I want to acknowledge that some of you may be on your uh, mobile phones, so if your fun functionality is reduced, it's okay, don't worry, relax. Um, you know, uh, what I want most is your attention. If you can interact, fantastic. But what's more important to me is that you can um, give us your attention. Um, and also, I want to acknowledge that there will be, you know, different uh, levels of experience and interest among you as the audience, uh, as best we can. We want this to be able to be obviously relevant and practical um, for you. So, um, you know, I'll try and pick examples, I'll try and pick uh, contexts that um, are universal, if you like. Um, if I don't, then please forgive me, or say that in the chat, you know, say, well, how, how can I make this relevant to my experience? And we'll do our best for that. But yeah, that's just to acknowledge uh, who's here. Um, I'm already finding it weird just, just, just speaking to a screen, but hey, there, these are the times we are, we are in. And it's an opportunity to connect to as many of you out there as, I, as we can. Great. Um, so, Julie, please do monitor the questions. If there are any questions so far, let me know. 
Yeah. Okay. I don't know. People are starting to introduce themselves. So, uh, oh, are they? Who have we got then? Let's, let's have a so look. We have, we have uh, Felista. Yes. Uh, from Nigeria and Enogu from Nigeria. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing mis uh, your names. Uh, so Niger Nigeria is on, in the place. Okay, fantastic. Um, we also uh, we have um, we we'll also have Iran. Yeah. Uh, we have Eva from Kenya. Hello, Eva. Nice to see you. Bye, Iran. Great. Well, keep those coming in because I do want to know who's here. Um, thank you so much. Um, so we are here to talk about um, well-being and resilience. So the f the very first thing I'm going to do, which may sound weird to you, is pause. I want us to or everyone to pause and just to arrive, so that you can put put down whatever you've been doing in the day so far. You can forget about whatever comes later on, and just right now, and I'm going to put a timer on it. I just want you to sit still, take a breath, or actually, more importantly, take an out breath. And, go, and you can stare off into the distance, look out the window. Um, just take a moment to breathe, be present, feel your feet on the ground, and maybe set an intention for what you want to get from this session. You might want to um, just uh, think of something you're grateful for, maybe say a prayer, but just anything just for one minute, the end of which will be a bell, just for one minute, just pause and enjoy having that pause. Here we go, one minute. Okay. Hmm. Thanks for that. <clears throat> um, I'm also going to do some. So pausing is good for us. Slowing down is good for us. I now, I now feel better than I did when I first logged on, and I was wondering about the technology and this and that, and who's going to be here. Now I feel calmer. I feel more settled. I'm also going to do another thing that's good for um, our well-being: is take a sip of water. Most of us spend most of our lives dehydrated, um, and it's not good for us. <clears throat> okay, we're off. So um, first thing, um, and by the way, if you have any comments about that, course, if you think, oh, that was weird or that was great, then you know, let us know. <clears throat> what we're going to do now is I want to ask you why you're here. So uh, Judy is kindly... My glamorous assistant is going to post into the chat a link, um, and this should open up a poll for you to um, just give us a word or two about what curiosity brings you to this session today. Julie, do we have the link? <clears throat> yeah, posting it right now. So the, the question is, what curiosity brings you here today? So if you could, if you click on that link, you'll see two boxes and you can um, enter a word or a couple of words about what brings you here today. And then we'll be able to see the, uh, the results of, of us as a group. <clears throat> Might give us an indication of how many people are here as well. <laughs> no, no. I know. First results coming in. Da, da, da. 
So please start voting. So enfin, start putting your 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 results. So you have to go on the chat box on the discussion board and click on the menti.com link I just posted here. Yeah. Is it linked direct or do they need to copy and paste? Um don't know actually. Is it direct link? <laughs> Uh, I think they have to copy paste it and yeah. Copy and paste, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let me. That's, that's something to learn. I um, yeah. I thought it was a direct link. Um, yeah. Anyone having trouble with that? We do have a backup plan as well. Um, but copy and paste should be okay. It, as I say, it may be trickier for people on phones, but hopefully, if you're on a laptop, it's easy. So we will ask you several times to do that. So the first poll is kind of the test. So please try and uh, copy paste that link and answer. Give us your answer. How about you, Julie? What curiosity brings you here? Well, I want to to know about more how people are feeling these days. You know, uh, we, we had a tough year with COVID, etc. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I want to know what's happening out there. For, and I understand, you know, different countries, we have different contexts. So, yeah, I want to see how people are coping with all of this. Yeah, I think it's similar for me. The context thing is, is always key because everyone's context is going to be unique. And there are some contexts that we share. You could say the whole world is like in a shared context of COVID, but then you have different uh, countries. You know, it's different contexts in different countries, different regions, different communities, different families, different individuals. So the context is always um, uh, different and is always shifting in that regard. Have we got any responses? Yeah, let me share the first. So. So, curiosity, how to develop it, uh, meaning, yeah, resilient. what is resilience really? Learning, partnership, open mind. Okay, all of those sound relevant. Um, we'll keep that poll open for those who are still doing it, Julie, and yep. um, let me know if anything fresh comes through. The other thing for you all is that we will be sharing the results and sharing all our slides um, and all our questions as one sort of handout at the end. So um, if you want to take notes, you're welcome to, but you don't need to, you certainly don't need to write down what's in the slides, okay? You might want to write down what um, comes out of the, um, the conversation, the presentation, but all, all the content will be given to you afterwards. Good, um, so why are we here? Well, um, I've noted it down as three things. So we're here to increase awareness and appreciation of personal well-being and resilience. And I can say per personally, I think it's pretty much the most important thing in the world. Um, because if we can take care of ourselves, then we can take care of each other. And if we can if we can teach this to our children, then they will grow up knowing how to take care of themselves. Um, we're here to share and learn from each other, from, from each other as participants, and also uh, from us as presenters. We'll share where we can. And we're here to discover simple concepts, tools, and ideas um, that, are, for me, it's important that we can put them into practice. But if, if it's just theory, then, it, you know, so what? So for me, it's like, you know, if, if everyone leaves with one thing <laughs> that they can actually try out and use, then um, I feel like I'm doing my job. So. Um, First thing I want to um, ask you, well, the next thing I want to ask you, sorry, is what do you think um, well-being is? I just want you to put that in the chat. What is well-being for you? Just pop it in the chat, your first ideas. It's not about right or wrong. We're having a discussion here. Um, Julie, when you think of well-being, what, what comes to mind for you? Um, soothe. Soothe, soothe. I don't know how to pronounce that. Soothe, meaning? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, kind of pausing and taking a step back. Something. Okay. Yeah. We're taking a pause, taking a step back. Yeah, for, for me, well being is um, it's kind of there in the word. It's not just, um, 
And for me, it's not just when, how do we look after ourselves when things go wrong, right? So it's not waiting until we're broken or, or, or something needs fixing. It's actually about um, constantly nurturing ourselves. Um, and I had a nice definition of, of uh, nurture, which is to care for something grow that's growing. Um, I haven't seen any comments in the chat, so um, <clears throat> we'll move on. Um, um, you know, because obviously that's what here, people are here to discover. But I just think it's such a universal term at the moment. And everyone's saying, oh, you got to look, don't do well-being, you've got to do resilience. And it's like, yeah, uh, what does it mean? Oh, we got one from Iran. It's a state of not feeling in crisis. I wonder if you could um, rephrase that, Iran. You know, maybe for you it's a state of being calm and being capable. Yeah. And this is another thing, by the way. Um, it's important if we can f if we can focus on what we do want. Nice to be able to manage the crisis when it comes across. Yeah. So if we can focus on what we do want, we move towards it. If we focus on what we don't want, it can help, but we're still focused on what we don't want. So if I say to you, um, you know, don't think of a pink tree, right? The mind can't cope with the negative. It has to think of the thing it doesn't want in order to not think about it. So it's, it's, it's changing our language from, you know, don't forget the car keys to remember the car keys. Yeah. Um, so I love that, to be able to manage crisis when it comes. I would even put if it comes. Um, um, good. So thanks for that, Iran. Um, and I think it's important to know your, what it means for you. You find your own um, meaning. You know, we're meaning-making creatures. So here from Eva, it's a state of being comfortable even in uncertainty, understanding my capabilities and... I also associate well-being with happiness. That's wonderful. And that's, and that's what I'm talking about in terms of having a clarity on what it means for you. So you know when it's there and you know when it's not there. And that becomes your compass. That becomes your, 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 your own reference point. Um, good. What I want to – I'm now going to present a slide. I'm going to try really hard not to do too many slides, but I want to show some of them to you. So. Um, where's it gone? Is that, can you see my slide, Julie? Yeah, it's, uh, it's loading, it's loading. Uh, so for participants, if the slide, uh, because you, you might see me in, uh, like half of the screen and Richard were on the other, if you want the slides to be bigger, you can double click on it, or you can also change the way you view the platform, uh, next to the microphone, uh, you have a little square, so you have to click on the square to change how you want to view and if you want to see the, the slides in a bigger view. So have a play, find out what, which one works for you. Um, what I want to show you is, you know, um, uh, it was called the Kubler-Ross change curve, okay? And this was something that's been, for me, it's like a, a map of... Um, stages we go through when change happens okay so you know stages we go through when change happens because that because change is a the constant in our lives but it's how do we respond and how do we react so if you look at this model um you'll see on the left that when you know let's say we're normally go doing what we normally do and then something changes and especially if it's sudden it's like a, it's a shock OK, if we take the and we're gonna, I'm going to use the example of COVID because that's the context we all share right now. So it's like, what? There's a there's a pandemic and it moves quickly and you can die from it and people get unwell. And and, and, and these these groups are at risk. OK, so there's a genuine shock and it has an effect on our emotions. It has an effect on our thoughts. It has an effect on our bodies, that that shock, that, almost, that trauma. Um, so that's the first stage. And we're kind of in this, you know, rabbit in the headlights. What's happening? Our second response is actually denial. It's that, no, this can't be true. This can't be happening. No, 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 I don't want to believe it. I, I don't believe it and I don't want to believe it. And we will actually um, seek evidence. As human beings, we will constantly seek evidence. It's called uh, confirmation bias. So we will seek evidence to um, confirm 
what's happening for us. So we'll look for ways to confirm our disbelief. Okay, and we push it away, deny, deny. But it's still there. So then we go into frustration. It's like, well, why is this happening? And um, who's to blame? And, you know, I've lost my business or um, I've lost a loved one or I can't go and see my friends. Or sometimes it's just, you know, I've, I just can't go to the, sh to, to the shop. I can't do what I normally do, right? And there's this frustration and we want to blame someone for it. And after that comes the depression. That's the, and it's described here as a lack in energy. It's when we hit the bottom and we go, oh, I shouldn't swear actually, but you know, it's, it's when we go, oh no, oh my God, um, I'm lost here. I don't know what to do. I've, we, we feel completely unresourceful and we, and we don't have no idea what to do about it. Um, and we don't know which way to turn and we, and we feel, yeah, and we, and we don't know what to do. It's that, oh no, oh my God moment. It's also the moment where it changes. So we sort of like hit the bottom and we start to bounce because we're quite resourceful. We're very resourceful as human beings. So we, we let go what we can't do and we start to look at, well, what can I do? And that's really where the switch happens. We go from I can't to what can I do? And this is where we said, well, I can try this. You know, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to, um, you know, I can't go and stay with my family, but maybe we can meet somewhere in between um, and do and outdoors. And you know what I mean? So it's, it's trying something new. My business has collapsed with that product. What different product can I create with the same resources or what different service can I create? And lots of people in business are talking about pivoting. So we say, I'm, going to, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try something new. And through the experimenting, we then go to the uh, deciding, which is, um, oh, well, that, I, well, that didn't work or that, that did or that didn't work. But if I try more of this, then I can, this is my choice. This is my decision. This is, this is how I'm going to move forward. Um, and it starts to feed a sense of uh, positive, greater positivity. Oh, look, I can. This is what I can do. The integration part is when we keep practicing and we keep going. Um, and it, I mean, you heard people talk about the new normal. It's like, and we've actually gone, well, this works. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it. Um, and that could be for anything. It could be how, how we operate in our relationships. It could be to do with our health. Um, it could be to do with our businesses. I know, I mean, Julie, we've come across people who were focused on one area of their business and because of COVID, They've actually set up a whole new, you know, their business has completely changed and they're doing something new with it. Um, so this is the curve. Um, as I say, we'll send this out afterwards. What I would like to know from you, and we've got another poll for this, is where can you relate to from the last few months? OK, so I'm going to we're going to send out the poll, which has all the seven stages. And I want you to click on. Um, Three that you can relate to. Okay, three that you can relate to. Um, I'll leave the presentation up just up for now so that everyone can see it. Julie, have you got the link? Yeah, I've put it on the chat. So please uh, click on the link and start uh, voting. <laughs> um, fabulous. Okay, I'm just going to, while that's happening, Uh, I'm going to come back to the room if that works. Yeah. Am I now? Am I back in the room? Yeah, we can see you, Richard. Okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're. And Julie, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep asking you these questions, but where, where, do, where, where have you uh, spent most time <laughs> in the last few months? Well, I, I've been in shock. Uh, in shock first. Um, I've been very frustrated, uh, especially with homeschooling situation. Uh, you know, in Kenya, uh, we no school for eight months so far. Uh, and then decision, time to de decide what we do, you know, how we move on. So for me, yeah, shock, frustration, decision. Nice. I think for me, it's been... Um yeah, frustration and experimentation, actually, you know, um, and what I notice about 
let's say frustration is it is often a, it's it's like a blame thing it's like i'm feeling frustrated who's who can i blame and we look at the politicians and we look at i don't know the public here in the uk who are behaved you know we generalize and we say oh everyone's you know behaving like this although they're not because actually what's also happened is people are being very neighborly and people are really looking out for each other and, you know, perhaps making even uh, nurturing their friendships and uh, making new friends. Um, so I can also associate with the experimentation. You know, most of my work went out the window um, because it was mostly face to face. And that's still the case with some clients. Um, but I tried to stay calm. And actually a lot of, you know, like Mowgli have come back and said, well, we're experimenting too. Do you want to experiment with us? So I think for me, it's a lot of frustration and experimentation. So. So sharing the result here. Okay. Yep. What have we got? Yeah, a mix, a mix of everything except for, for integration. Okay. So a lot of, um, a lot of decisions. Yeah. That's good to hear. It's good to hear. So, yeah, a mix of the others. Um, not so much in denial. I think that's important when it comes to well-being as well, is, is kind of accepting the situation. Um, what, I, what I find with this whole curve, though, is like, you know, we can go down into the detail of it, but what it helps me do, something you mentioned earlier, Julie, is to take a step back. OK, and this is important in well-being is actually having a perspective that's bigger than the, just, you know, the situation that's um, that we're entangled with at the time. OK, so on a practical level, I think being aware of this curve and going, oh, look, right now I'm I'm in shock or I'm in frustration or I'm in depression. Good. I know that's going to pass. It doesn't feel good at the time, yeah. but I know it's part of a bigger change curve. And once we can do that, we start to work with it rather than it sort of overwhelming us. Okay. Yes. That's yeah. how this curve can, can help us. Is there anybody in our um, group who would like to comment on what they've put? In which case, the way to do that is to raise your hand and we can invite you onto the stage. No obligation. It would just be lovely to um, hear a voice if you have something to say about your anything you've noticed about that tool or your 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 experiences this year? <clears throat> I mean, for me, being aware of this uh, curve really helped me grow, uh, go through COVID and through the different, you know, you know government uh, giving different types of decision all the time, change it because you, you, we, during the COVID crisis, we, we went through a lot of different change curve, uh, you know, every three weeks, you know, something like that. So for me, it really helped me to analyze my own feeling to be able yeah. to respond uh, and say, so, okay, now I need to do something. If I'm in the depression phase or in the shock phase or in the denial, I, at least, I, okay, I know I need to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, no, it really helped me go through. Uh, the right. um, and then, yeah, what I hear there is it's because it's, it's acknowledging the emotions, right? The emotions are there. And what I, but what I find is that the emotions want to move. They want, you know, I often think of, emotion as energy in motion so the thing not to do is suppress it because that takes up a lot of our energy and and then um, can exhaust us so the so what i also find helpful is to use this in communication with other people either it can help me in a number of ways so it can help me um have more empathy with someone else if i recognize where they are in the curve but also it's just to have that communication with each other to be able to say, well, you know, today or in this moment, I'm not in a good place, um, but, you know, it'll pass. Or I am in a good place. How can I help? So, um, yeah, it's, it's a tool for, as well, it's a tool, tool for communication for me. Um, good. We haven't had any hands up, have we? That's no. Not That's yet. cool. But if you have any um, reflections, if, you, if something has struck a chord or, um, something that you want to say from your experience, please, you know, feel free to put it in the, in the discuss. Okay, I'm just going to pause and have a glass of water. <laughs> oh, it's, it's I think people want to know. They want to know what are you going to show next, Richard? 
Too much suspense. Uh, what am I going to say next? Okay. What? Uh, I'm just turning my sheet over so I do know what's coming there. What I'm going to do next is show you another slide. Now, come on, I'm getting good. I'm sure, I can do this quickly now. What I'm going to show you now is called um, the belief cycle. Okay, maybe some of you have come across this or similar. It's used in um, CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. It's also used in um, many coaching and mentoring um, uh, programs. <clears throat> so what I'm saying is, we'll start here. I have a belief, okay? Um, we have many beliefs. Some of them are universal, like I believe the sun will shine, uh, the sun will come up tomorrow, okay? But then we have individual beliefs about ourselves, about um, other people, and about life. You know, so uh, I might have a belief that um, I'm a good person, that people are kind and that life is an opportunity. OK, but I might equally have a, be a belief, um, which is I'm not good enough. Um, people are out to get me and life is a struggle. OK, so different examples. What happens is um, our beliefs influence our thoughts. OK, so. If um, let's say, and, and then we start to have those those thoughts. For example, I'm not good enough. Or we'll st I start to think about ways that I'm not good enough. Yeah. If I think I'm a good person, I'll start to think of ways that I am a good person. And those thoughts trigger our emotions. You know, how do I feel about being a good person or not being good enough? Just as examples. And then those emotions really drive, as I said, we are emotional, meaning-making creatures. So those emotions drive our behaviors. They drive our actions. Um, and if we behave in one way consistently enough, we, we create habits. Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, if I have a, so if I've got the belief of I'm not good enough, therefore I'm thinking thoughts about not being good enough, I'm, let's say, draining myself, depressing myself emotionally, making myself feel uh, sad, guilty. Um, my behaviors are likely to be uh, withdrawn or maybe I'll self-sabotage myself for my own success. Um, and that becomes my habit, which becomes my way of life. Sorry, oops, wrong way. Um, and that creates my circumstances. So I start to create a life of not being good enough, which reinforces the belief that I'm not good enough. I can't see any of you to nod, but I'm going to assume that makes sense if I've explained it clearly. Um, what I want you to notice at this stage is how they interlink. And there, it is really just this, this cycle that goes round. Now, what are these things? What are these beliefs, these thoughts? You know, where do they come from? Um, and do we even press that pause button to actually stop and say, well, what are my beliefs? What am I thinking? What am I feeling? How am I behaving? What are my habits? What are my current circumstances? And how much of that have I created? So you'll see here, it can be positive, as I've mentioned, it can be a positive cycle, which, if you like, evolves us upwards or, you know, to be more of who we are, or it's a negative one, which brings us down and sort of, um, you know, drains us and constrains us. What I try and do is, is, when, is notice, to pour, again, press the pause button and say, is what I'm thinking true? Is, uh, is the belief or the thought, is it true? Is it kind? Is it helpful? Because for me, that, that's the so what. It's like it brings it into something practical in my life. Um, and asking those questions when for yourself. And again, the more you do it for yourself, you can more, you're more than you can do that for other people. You'll hear what they say about themselves, about other people and about life. And you can, even if you don't question them, you can just say, no, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if that's true, kind, helpful. Curiosity is the way in here. And is that even mine or inherited? So quite often we'll be, think, we'll be believing, thinking, feeling, behaving, because it's something that we've imitated growing up, usually from family, might be from teachers, might be from... You know, uh, leaders or influential people in, on TV, you know, we've picked up something from other people without even noticing it. 
and we've absorbed it and taken it in as our own without pausing to say, is that true? Is that kind? Is that helpful? Is that what I want? Okay. Please post any questions um, as we go. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going. Julie, have we got anything so far? No, nothing. So in other words, what you're saying, Richard, is that uh, we are judging, enfin, we have to, to analyze our own belief and thoughts when they're coming. Like, is that true? Is that kind? Is that helpful? Is that mine? Yeah. This is a, this is yeah. a tool for self-awareness, right? And our self-awareness is constantly evolving. And we can have moments of where we lack self-awareness. I call them the blind spots. We don't quite see them. Um, but yeah, having having self-awareness, pausing to reflect, which isn't always given to us in our lives. Sometimes we have to create that moment, but we can do it. You know, we can do it while you're walking to the bus. Yeah, you can do it while you listen to music. Um, <clears throat> you can do it with journaling maybe before you go to bed. So there are ways to build self-reflection into your life and, and, you know, what is my awareness and what's my non-awareness? Of course, we use this at Mowgli um, with, in mentoring because often a mentor can be that person who holds up the mirror and who's a sounding board to actually ask you questions about these. Say, so, well, what are your beliefs? What are your thoughts? You know, what do you want? How, what do you think of yourself? What do you think of other people <clears throat> and life and business and so on? So this cycle can be paused, interrupted, and um, as I was saying earlier with Iran, and reframed. So is it positive? Is it negative? It's your, ultimately, it's your choice. Once you have the awareness, you have choice. Okay, that's the first step is awareness. Then you have the choice whether you want to change something. So um, a, neg a, a negative belief cycle is being told what to do. I can see this at the moment with certainly in the UK with governments and local councils. So we wait to be told what to do. This is at the top. Then we don't like what we hear. So we resent it. We become negative and complaining. Or we feel negative and complaining. So we create negative outcomes because we're wandering around in, in negativity. We, uh, we blame others and we create a, a circumstance of no initiative, no responsibility. And then it just goes to go around to waiting to be told what to do. OK, that's one example. When we take ownership and we say, hang on, I'm going to I'm going to do what I can and I'm going to let go of what I can't. <laughs> it becomes my choice. So that's when you take ownership, you know, and it's ownership of what we can because there are things that are outside of our control what can i control okay i have the motivation to do something about it then i start to empower myself and my decisions create positive outcomes this can lead into um, satisfaction and in the workplace recognition um and then wow that worked that really worked okay i'm going to do more of it i'm going to take more responsibility for my life and my actions and my outcomes and it's treated very much as a learning cycle good i'm hoping this makes sense julie so far so good yeah uh, and don't don't worry we'll send out those slides huh? so yeah so if you feel right. a bit lost don't worry you will have everything uh, sent out after the event Back of sharing. See if I'm back in the room. Um, good, good. So I've talked to. I've used the word pause a lot. So oh, I'm just going to take a breath myself. Um, and the other thing I invite you to do, I don't know whether you're going to do it or not, is take a, is take a break. This isn't a break where you go off and you disappear and you know never come back. Um, <laughs> But one of the things that a lot of us are doing is spending a lot of time with our screens, yeah, or um, on a normal day, you know, if we're working in offices and things. And not all of us um, are very good at taking a pause and just moving our bodies, you know, because we can. So one thing I'm going to, I've already mentioned one thing is just pausing and staring out the window. So that's one way to pause. Going and getting a glass of water, yeah, and just sipping the water. That's another way to pause. And another one is to move the body and stretch. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but, you know, I'm stood up for one thing. So just, you know, you can stand up from where you are. You can take a stretch. You can move your shoulders. 
you know, you can move your neck gently from side to side, or you can just gently move it around one way to the front, and then gently move it back around to the back. Uh, you might want to have a little dance. You might want to stamp your feet. You could move your hips. And there's one I was taught by one of my veteran friends, which is particularly for those who are sitting at our desk most of the day. So our, our spine has three planes of movement. So there's the forward movement, sideways movement, and then rotation. Okay. So one thing we can do for our spines um, is, so you don't move the hips. You don't move the hips, but you bend the spine. <laughs> okay. So you bend forward. That's one movement. That's okay. Are you standing or sitting? No, I'm sitting. I can't stand. Otherwise, I need to change the whole okay, camera. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then the other one is to, is to bend, as I say, your hips stay, but you bend to the side. And then you come up to the middle. And you bend to the side. Okay. And then another one you do is the rotation. So you rotate okay. to the left. You come back to the middle. You rotate to the right. Okay. I don't know about you. I can really feel it. Um, and then other ones you can do, you can then build on that. Okay, so you can rotate to the left and then bend, for example. Then you come back up and you rotate to the right and you bend. Okay, so you can do different combinations, but the idea is just to get you standing, get your spine moving, because that's the thing that suffers most when we're not, we're not uh moving um and just gets the blood going and it you know it resets the brain as well and there's a lot of science behind this but um you have to do it i have to do it otherwise it doesn't get done <laughs> um so yeah so there are ways to build in breaks into your day okay consciously creatively and you do the break physically you do the break emotionally you do the break mentally okay it's all part of our well-being um, I'd love to know if anyone has any thoughts on how, how they build breaks into their day. So um, please do say that. So put something in the discuss box. Of, and, and I'm always looking for, for new ideas as well. Um, you know, I like to try out different stuff. So if you've got any suggestions, music is a great one, obviously. I'm not going to do that now. Um, but, yeah, build those um uh, Build those breaks into your day. And I think there's even some research, but I can't remember the accuracy or uh, the detail of it. But I think we stop being productive after, I think it's 40 minutes or is it 20 minutes even? It's not very much. We stop being productive. Um, you know, our production levels dip after a certain amount without a break and also after a certain amount of hours a day. Um, so just, you know, see what this does, what effects this has on your productivity. Okay. So we have um, uh, Ona, uh, Ota ne Negana saying uh, that he, he takes a walk up and down the stairs and stands on outside in the sunlight. Uh, I personally yeah, do the same. I go out in the garden and just go out. Yeah, uh, fabulous. Yeah. So there's a change of scene, is refreshing, right? They've got the movement, yeah. Um, the fresh air and the sunlight. The sun is great for us. A burst of sunshine um, and vitamin D that we get naturally from the sun is really good for our immune system. What do we all need right now? Immunity. <laughs> so all of these things are good for our immune, for our immune system, our natural immune system. Yeah. No, during COVID, when I was really frustrated, I was going in the garden with scissors and I was cutting stuff in the, in the garden, so my garden looks very nice these days. <laughs> so it worked? I mean, it had a good effect on you? Yeah, 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 because, you know, you, you release the tension by cutting the, the leaves, and then uh, you're like, okay, you, you went out, you know, you're not in front of your screen, then you come back, you're like, okay, I released right. the... <laughs> I know. And, and here's another tip I'll give you, is, is, is do it consistently, right? Do it regularly, even when you're feeling well. Right. And in fact, I'd say especially when you're feeling well, because the time you'll need it is when you, the time you're stressed, you know, the time you're low, the time you're 
So by doing these practices regularly, yeah, you're strengthening that muscle of taking care of yourself. Okay. Ah, oh, good. So, um, guess what? It's time for a poll. Yes, putting in in the chat right now. So the poll that is going into the chat is asking you what you believe, what you understand by resilience. Okay, we asked about well-being earlier. Um, I'd now like to ask you about resilience. They may be the same thing for you. I don't know. Um, so um, our question is, what is resilience? What do you understand by resilience? What is resilience for you? So, so please start voting. So vote away. And again, all your responses will be collated and sent out to you. Um, as a handout afterwards. <clears throat> so I could ask you, Julie, as well, but um, you know, you might give the answers away. <laughs> uh, for me, what is resilience? Yeah, maybe I shouldn't share. Yeah, will influence people. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a big, de big debate uh, before uh, on, between resilience and endurance. So interesting. Yeah. Difference. Okay, so we'll talk about it later, I guess. But for me, it was quite a big, uh, yeah, something interesting. Yeah, and I, the work I've done with veterans, quite a lot of them realise that they, they, you know, their training makes them tough. Okay, so they're tough human beings, but they also realise that they weren't necessarily resilient. So we'll have a look at that. <clears throat> so please continue to vote. Votes are coming in, but I think we need more people to vote. Um, Allez, two more votes. So click on the link in the discussion in the in the chat. Oh, by the way, I just noticed a little icon. I think it tells us we've got fifty-six people in the room. So. Yes, nice, nice number. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. <clears throat> okay. okay. So I'm going to share the results. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Mm. So, Richard, what, what do you think? So I'm going to refresh one last time. Okay. I'm just trying to double click on it. I can't quite see it. It's got really small on my screen. So do you mind reading it out? So 20% uh, for includes personal growth, 20% yeah. for determined by attitude, 20% for managing emotions, and 40% learning from adversity. Okay. We've got a pretty good group. Um, <laughs> thanks very much. So I also slipped in some ones there that were what I would say it's not, and I'm. And listen, these are my, um, these are definitions from my experience and from, as I say, working with um, specialists in a military setting. Okay, about what it is and what it isn't. Um, so I want to, and you know, you'll find different descriptions in many, many different places. What I try to want to try and do is make it practical for you. So um, what I think is important is resilience is not my ability to face physical hardship, okay? That's endurance. And I would also say it's not just carry, being able to carry on as before, okay? That's also a form of endurance. It's like perseverance. Okay, now, endurance and perseverance are great, okay? But I, and I would say they're sort of, they either overlap or they're included in resilience, but it's not, I must just go harder for longer, because actually that that can be depleting and that can be exhausting okay and it may be the old way of doing things but what all the science and all the research is showing us and all just personal experience is showing us is it's not um resilience and it's not necessarily good for us long term might help in a short-term task or a project um you know i'm going to stay up until whatever o'clock to get something done but that's not necessarily being resilient. <clears throat> being resilient 
as we've touched on already, is being able to manage my emotions and my thoughts, as we've touched on with the belief cycle, without repressing them. Okay, so it's a lot to do with acknowledgement. This is how I'm feeling, this is how I'm thinking. It's being able to, as I think it was Iran who said earlier, um, I'm a, I can't remember who without looking, but um, it's, being, it's being capable to respond to adversity. So when crisis comes, it's what it's like, you know, I can manage this. I can respond to this rather than react to it or run away from it, yeah, which is our tendency, you know, our fight flight tendency. Um, it's a lifelong learning process. Okay, resilience isn't something you tick in a box and go, yep, done my resilience course, right? I'm, I'm done. It's, it's lifelong and we, we will be tested and we will be challenged. But when we respond, okay, it's, it's something that can grow us. Some of you may have heard of um, post-traumatic stress. There's now a lot of evidence now about post-traumatic growth. It's like, yes, there was a trauma. Okay, but what did I learn from it? Where does it take me next in my life? Um, and for me, the big one is it's determined by my attitude. Because if you if you um, address something from a belief cycle that is positive, that I want to be kind to myself and I want to be positive with myself and others, then that's what you'll take into any situation. And that's what will feed back to you as well, either from yourself or from the people around you. So it really is determined by, by, by attitude. I understand that we all live in different contexts, like I said earlier, but our experience of that, of that context will absolutely be governed by our, the attitude that we take into it. Um, and maybe what we find with our um, mentors is they often give a big, that bigger perspective to the, to the mentees. And with the mentees, what we often find is that they're able to find that, that um, switch in attitude from I can't to I can. Or, you know, from to, to drop what I can't do and focus on what I can do. <clears throat> so these are our thoughts on resilience. Um, any comments so far? Julie, you're on mute. So. If you have comments, please uh, don't hesitate to comment yeah. on the chat, okay. on the discussion. And we put a summary into the into the discussion there, but this all of this will also come back, come out in the handout. Um, we are also going to share with you some other resources, um, some uh, sort of white papers on what um, the ways of looking at resilience and what it is and what it isn't. And there's also, for me, there's a brilliant um, TED talk. Uh, it's called Three Tips That Resilient People Know and well worth listening to. Um, she does this lovely bit at the beginning where she asks she goes she asks people to stand up if they've um, encountered certain challenges or uh, moments of suffering in their lives you know loss illness grief these kinds of things and in the end pretty much the whole room is standing up and there's just this deep feeling of um, um, empathy in the room of this, you know, everyone connecting as human beings. Um, so this can help as well. It's like everyone has got their stuff going on. So her three tips, and we'll, again, we'll put this in the handout. We'll also send you the link to the TED Talk. Bad stuff happens, okay? It's a part of our all our lives. It's relative, but it's a part of all our lives. So there's a, that's for me is about acceptance, acceptance that what happens happens. The next one is to harvest the good stuff. OK, and for me, that's about gratitude. Um, there's always something we can be grateful for. Yeah, uh, I don't know. For me, it's it's if I'm in a bad mood, there's no one better to hang out with than my, my little nephew, Tom, Tom, who's seven always puts a smile on my face. And my niece, um, Molly, who's 10. Even when they're grumpy, they sometimes put a, put a smile on my face. But just, um, you know, and to try and show up for the, as, as a positive force in their lives gets me out of my own grumpiness, for example. Um, 
you know, nature for me is always a, always a brilliant one. If any time I can connect with with nature, like um, like was being said about stepping into the sunshine. So harvest the good stuff. Yeah. Um, and the third one is ask yourself, is what I am doing helping or harming me? And to do that to every thought and every decision. Because I'll give you an example. We might be feeling sorry for ourselves. So we think, right, I'm going to um, polish off uh, a bottle of some, some form of alcohol. Okay. And that might put a sort of, you know, temporary cover up the pain. Okay. Um, but it might not be very good for us um, that night or the next morning. Just as an example, I can, I can speak from personal experience, which I won't go into right now. Um, so it might be I'm just going to have one glass. Yeah. And when you go to the, have the, the second glass or the next bottle or something, you just go, hang on, is this helping me or harming me? So these are little things that you can take away. Bad stuff happens. Harvest the good stuff is what I'm doing helping or harming me. OK, these are these are what resilient people do. Um, and Oprah, I've got a quote here from Oprah Winfrey, who says, turn your wounds into wisdom. Which I think is a great tip. So any questions so far? I haven't seen any. So, no. OK. Either we are spot on with what we're doing or people have lost interest. <laughs> that was the first one. Um, good. I'm going to show you another model now, and this is one that we use. Uh, let me go back to present. Um, so, so send us some little thumbs up if we are if you're all okay. So we want to, to know if you're yeah, if everything is okay. Um, <laughs> so this one we use very much with the uh, the veterans that I work with, and it's taken from Paul Gilbert's um, Compassionate mind and what it's saying and, and this is for all of us this is all human beings right we have a um uh these three major brain functions first one is threat and it's our stress response it's what keeps us alive really okay um and so it doesn't have to be you know threat there's a you know there's a there's a lion coming at us <clears throat> um which is where it originates from, by the way. It's like it's it's how how did we keep alive when we lived in the wild? Um, it's but it's, it can be I'm thirsty. It could be I'm tired. I'm hungry. Okay, so it's it's a it's it's um it's that part of our brain which is constantly monitoring the threat. Okay, um, and then the next one is drive, which is the the ability to take action. OK, so um, the ability to perform and also to um, it comes with performance, but also that sense of fulfillment, a sense of achievement. OK, so we have threat and then we have doing something. Um, and as I say, that could be as basic as I feel thirsty. So I'm going to pick up my glass and take a drink of water. It could be as simple as that. This is going on all the time. And then what most of us are doing in the modern world is yo-yoing between threat drive, threat drive, threat drive. Okay, I need more money, I must go to work. I need more money, I must go to work. I need more money, I must go to work. So it's it's very current. Um, and it's one feeds the other, okay? Because if I don't do enough in the achievement with the, the, the drive, my threat gets triggered. Yeah, I didn't do enough, I feel threatened. <clears throat> What we have, what we often forget to do, okay, although we did it very naturally as children, is soothe. And by soothe, I'm talking about active recovery. This isn't just rest, okay? This isn't just, it's actually regenerate. So our natural, our best natural way of doing that is sleeping. Yeah, where we actually regenerate. But we don't sleep very well if we're under, if we're feeling under threat or if we're over or underperforming. I don't know if this makes sense. Um, so what we need to do better when it comes to well-being and resilience is bring more active recovery into our lives. Okay, so that means to stop performing and driving 
occasionally and just switch off. It also means managing our threat responses. Like we've been saying earlier, is it true? Is it kind? Is it helpful? Yeah, so soothing is what we did earlier. It's just taking that pause. Most of us, including me, arrived into here, probably with a bit of threat or drive going on. Yeah, I mustn't miss, I mustn't, I must do this well. That's what's going for me. Threat is saying, what if it goes badly? What if the technology doesn't work? Okay, but my soothe says, Richard, breathe, pause. It's okay, do your best. Yeah, it's how I speak to myself as well. It's a key part of this. So, again, all this will be handed out. Um, if we flip too much between the threat drive, threat drive, we exhaust ourselves, and that's when we become depleted. That's when we become disconnected. It's when we become depressed. Okay, and it's because we've forgotten to take care of ourselves. Well, being as a healthy dynamic of all three. So this isn't about doing one more than the other. It's actually about having a balance. Without threat, okay, we don't know, we don't know when we need to respond to the things that su support us and keep us, you know, to stay alive. Without drive, nothing changes. Okay, but without soothe, we forget to take care of ourselves. When we do have a healthy balance, we become whole, dynamic, capable human beings. Does this make sense to you, Julie? Yes, completely. Yeah. And for me, the revelation is that soothes bit. It's just noticing, oh my God. So I want you to think, you know, even now, it's like, up into the chat, ways that you, that we could, um, Soothe ourselves. We're going to do another poll on this in a minute as well. But if you've already know ways that you soothe, that you actively uh, take care of yourselves, and please put them in the chat. I don't want to go into too much detail on this slide. What I want to um, highlight is that the threat is is a self system. The drive is a um, sort of incentive base. It's our fulfilment seeking system. And um, the soothe is contentment, okay? And it's also that these are very much linked to uh, our hormones. We're, hormon we're driven by our hormones. So we have cortisol puts us on alert, okay, to keep us safe. That's what's – so when something, you know, a shock happens, it's cortisol that puts um, an adrenaline that gets into our system that makes us ready to take action. Um, with the uh, drive, okay, that releases dopamine. Okay, so often when we've maybe we've gone for a run or we've done something active or we've done something that's got good feedback, we feel good. Okay, but what's important is it doesn't sustain because it's based on effort. We have to keep doing effort. We have to keep doing effort. With the veterans, what we find is they, you know, often because of their military background, they go to the gym. Okay, so they go to the gym and they pump some iron and they do some weights and all these kind of things. And they feel good briefly, but then they feel bad because they didn't do as well as yesterday or they're constantly competing against themselves or each other. So it's not sustainable. It's the soothe that brings in the oxytocin. And oxytocin reduces cortisol and it reduces stress. This is so important for our well-being. I can't state it enough. And when you practice it, you will start to notice the difference. Okay. Um, good. So I think, Julie, we're switching to a poll, correct? Yes. Uh, and uh, Richard, we, we've got more than 14 uh, thumbs up, so, yeah. so we are on the right track. Good to know. Thank you for encouraging us. Yeah, thank you. No, this is, well, I'll tell you what, um, as you're encouraging us, um, that's giving the dopamine hit. Yeah. Right? By the way, this is how social media works, if you didn't know already. When we go into social media and we, we, we're striving for likes, we're actually in blue. We're in the blue bit quite often. 
Mm. Yeah. If I do this, then someone will like me. And what our system does is it gets a hit of dopamine, like going to the gym or you know doing some, doing a good piece of work, and we like it, right? But it's really important that we don't become dependent on that, which is what social media can become. Is I need to post the perfect life so that people will click on it and give me a dopamine hit. And I, you know, I won't go into it too much. But <laughs> whereas if you use social media for actually, this is what I this is what soothes me, or and I'm going to pass on that soothing. I'm going to share stuff that's going to support and care for others, and I don't need their response, right? Um, then that's you taking care of yourself. So it's very. I only just noticed that because I wanted to. I wanted the thumbs up for the interaction. Just so I know you're there. What I realized is I suddenly felt this, oh, that feels good. Yeah, but that's dopamine. Isn't it, isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? Yeah, I okay. want to my latest Facebook uh, post then, uh, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, actually, so re on, okay, well, recently on Facebook, I've been posting because we're getting these beautiful uh, autumn skies in uh, the UK. So I've been going for walks for, for my soothe. It's part of my soothe practice. And the, the skies have been so stunning that I wanted to share them with other people on Facebook um, because that's, for me, that's passing it off. Um, but, yeah, some people then come back and comment, and it's like, oh, I, I feel good that they feel good. So, it, you know, that it can be a positive thing. Us feeling good and passing it on can be um, mutually fulfilling, right? What I would say is if it's done from Soothe, if it's done, I'm going to do this for that person so that they give me positive feedback and without it, I don't know how to take care of myself, then I would suggest that's a negative, that has a potential for a negative loop. Okay, so our poll, have you put it in the... Um... Yes, but uh, I think people were so... Uh interested but what you were saying uh, Richard that nobody voted so start voting it's you're too show. kind you're too kind um so this is about the soothe bit okay so we want to know what ways can I be kind to myself as in you and what what one action so what one thing can and will you do to support your well-being okay so for me as I say it's walks in nature massive massive um Oof. It's, it's it's exhaling. It could be really simple as that. It's it's pausing for a minute before I start um, an activity with a client or an audience. Yeah, it could be um, you know I drink a big glass of water first thing in the morning. Right, the the part of us that dehydrates most during the night is our brain. So one of the best things we can do in the morning is rehydrate, <clears throat> especially the brain. What doesn't work is coffee, because coffee is, is dehydrates. Right? And even when we do drink coffee for enjoyment, maybe also have a glass of water to go with it. <clears throat> um, what else? Sleep is a massive one. So turning off, um, turning off my tech early enough so my brain can slow down before I go to sleep. So coming out of drive, yeah, or even threat. It's like, I haven't done that thing for tomorrow. Oh, yeah, but do you know what? I'm just going to put it all down and I'm going to start again in the morning because I will, I will be more effective in the morning if I go to sleep at 10 than if I go to sleep at 2. Yeah. Um, so continue to put you... your answers on, the, um, on the menti.com. We're waiting for your answers. Some nice things are coming up, but we want to know more. Hmm. What are yours, Judy? Um, me, uh, walking the dog. <laughs> Go for, you know, some, uh, for a good walk. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, Richard, the nature, we'll see, connect to nature from time to time, disconnect. Uh, this weekend, I was in the upper dares without any, you know, uh, internet connection. So mm. Nice, nice disconnection. Uh, yeah. That's flight cool. mode. Flight mode on your phone is awesome for soothe. <laughs> wow. Um what else? Yeah, there'll be certain relationships in your life, people you like. So there's a there's there's getting there's spending time with people 
and time alone if we're in the right balance. You know, because some of us are introverts, some are extroverts. But if you do too much of one, not enough of the other, yeah. we kind of need a balance. We need a balance of who and who we spend our time with. You know, if you spend your time with someone who's always whining and whinging and and um, uh, what's the word? Um, you know, uh, dramatizing the news and you know, there's time and a place for that. But if 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 it's not soothing, put it that way. Um, so choose it, surrounding yourself with good people really important um being with people you can be yourself with <clears throat> being yourself um what else decluttering is a good one it's a weird one but decluttering getting rid of the stuff that you don't need in your life anymore like and that could be decluttering relationships as well. oh yeah no, you're right i feel so good when i get rid of stuff and put it in the bin <laughs> yeah um, <clears throat> I've got another. Hear you. I want to hear from you. Please put it uh, on the click on the link and and share with us. You are. What do you do to be kind to yourself? What makes you feel good? Um, I know music is important to a lot of people. I uh, you know I wish I I know music has a good effect on me, but since sometimes so does silence. You know so. Um, journaling journaling can be a good one you know writing down your thoughts especially if i'm in a if i'm in a bad place i can write down all the bad stuff and then i burn it you know and it's just like okay that's the past you know i don't need that anymore oh somebody um, said read poetry but, oh, that, that's delightful wow. yeah reading really. i've during covid one of i joined a poetry group an online poetry group And we meet on a Tuesday evening and it's really peaceful and it's really calm and there's no pressure. And if you don't have to write anything, you can just listen, um, you know, and if you want to speak, you can. If you just want to listen to other people, you can. It's, it's just, it's lovely and it has a really positive effect on me. I, I sleep better afterwards. It's amazing. Could you read some out, Julie? Yeah, so, um, so positive self-talk. I think that's mm. a good one. Um, pause to reflect, exercise, gardening, cook. Uh, yeah, mm. A lot of banana cakes uh, were done during COVID, <laughs> during lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Gardening, gardening is a great one. Do you know um, that getting your hands dirty in the soil, okay, releases... Um, Uh, I've forgotten what it is. Oxytocin. It really, you know, so the, the feel good, um, soothe hormone. Um, we get as much oxytocin into our system when we get our hands dirty as when someone gives us a hug. Really? Wow. So if you're missing your hugs, get your hands dirty. Nice. <laughs> you know, a lot of entrepreneurs in Kenya uh, during the whole COVID went, you know, they went, went back to farming. And uh, that was something very important to them. They said, "Yeah, you know, we can diversify. We can. We have, you know, we have some. Sometimes we have gardens. We have land. We don't use. Let's let's use them. Let's you know. Let's go back to farming. Uh, baking. Mm. A lot of people were baking as well. Like go going. So there's bread. so there's something in that about um, simplification mm. as well. So for all of us, this is you know, let's simplify." Let's simplify. Let's just go back to the things that are good for us and good for others and good for the planet. Um, one I want to acknowledge as well is the acknowledge the situation. So, and I would, and I can, if I may add, acknowledge the situation and how I'm feeling about it. Because when we think back to the change curve and also the belief cycle, it's like then we add in, then we have that awareness and that perspective. And then when we're ready, we can start to experiment and make different choices. Um, You know, and start to go, well, if I if I know what I don't want, then what do I want? If I know what I can't do, then what can I do? And all of this starts to, to create a positive cycle. Um, with all of these, please, and this includes myself, keep practicing them. It's like you've got to, we, we, let's build our muscles of self-care and well-being. Okay? So, and again, build the muscles so that when we've got them on the days we don't feel like it. Um, and I've got a quote here, which is on the slide, which we'll share. 
Uh, the Chinese proverb, dig the well before you are thirsty. Okay, so practice these things now for when you really need them. Um, for me, it's also, um, to say with my nephew and niece, if I'm modeling it to others, then I'm, they, they can learn from me. So if I model something that's a good example, then I'm a demonstration of that to those that I work with, but importantly, the, the family, family and friends. Okay. Um, good. So, um, we're coming towards the end. I would love it if people could pop into the chat something that they've learned or something that they're going to take away from this session. Um, yeah, it could be a confirmation of something you knew already, but it, it, even better if it's something like, ah, oh, yes, that, didn't know that, or I'm going to use that, <clears throat> or that's given me something to, to uh, take away. As I say, I'm really interested in what people will actually put into practice. So you know, if you pop into the chat some things that you will, it could be something that you mentioned just now, but it could be something from earlier in the session that's made you think or made you feel differently. <clears throat> um, Richard. Do you know, for me, I've I, I, gone to... No, no, can, can you repeat the, what you want people to share in the discussion? Yeah, something that you've, some, uh, something that you've learned from this session today. Right. And preferably something that you're going to use. Something that you've learned, something that you can use. As I say, it could be a perspective, it could be a model, um, it could be something, some, something that you've seen in one of the word clouds. It could be a reminder to yourself. Yeah, a positive self-talk is, is, for me, that's always oh, a reminder. Always, always, always a reminder. I, I know I have a habit of self-judgment, right? And I also know that I feel so much better when I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I notice it. It's like someone was saying, acknowledge it. I acknowledge it when it happens. And then I try and change it. Okay, um, so thanks, Iran. Got some validation, also learned about some of the psych science behind feelings, well-being, and resilience. Reminder about focusing on prevention and preparation. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, the, thank you. That's the thing. I think the more we can, as I say, put it into practice, um, then it, it's, it's weird, the less we need it. So um, this is what I mean about going from stress to growth. And what they learnt also in the military, which is obviously an extreme setting, is that the more people um, do work on their well-being and resilience, okay, the better they perform in extreme situations. Mm. Okay, they didn't know that. They when they at the beginning it was all about recovery. It was all right, how you know, how do we get well after we've been broken? <laughs> But what they learned going forward is that the more that they worked on their well-being resilience, the less likely they were to get broken in the first place. I mean, sadly, I think that's been learned way too late, <laughs> but better late than never. <clears throat> you know, we are so it's such an opportunity and a gift to, to be able to talk about these things with you because we need we need we need them. We need them individually and we need them in the world. And as I've been saying, we, we, and whether it's leaders, whether it's children who are the leaders of the future, you know, this is, this is so necessary. When we're, when we're well, when we're resilient, we're more creative, we're more self-aware, we're more compassionate with each other, we have greater empathy for each other. The, the opportunities and the possibilities for us as individuals and as teams and groups and families and cultures, it becomes exponential. Yes, and as we all working with uh, entrepreneurs here um, at the AfriLab uh, conference, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we want to build resilient entrepreneurs to be able to build a resilient Africa, an innovative Africa. So, so resilience is key. So that's why we are keen to pass on, uh, you know, the knowledge tips um, to, you know, to our entrepreneurs. 
So, um, so we can write, finalize. I'm just going to present uh, one last slide. Um, if you have any questions, put them on the chat. So um, here are some that we, we consider important. Um, I've made mentioning pauses it's from the beginning. And carving out time for reflection. And then remember that cycle of awareness, responsibility, and choice. Healthy boundaries. So quite often it's what do we say no to? I'm not going to have that extra bottle of, of alcohol or I'm not going to say no to that person who drains me. I'm going to say, it's right. I'm not going to spend time with that person who drains me. But you do it through self-respect. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, I'm going to lock myself in my house. It can just be, you know, I can have respect for myself and I'm going to respect other people. That's where healthy boundaries come in. Eating, hydrating, exercising. Be kind to your bodies. Speak kindly to yourself and others. Yeah, like I mentioned for me, dropping the judgment, really important practice. Also, forgiveness. Um, it might be that something's happened in the past and you're still carrying a guilt around it. It's okay to let go of the guilt. Um, intention. I'm, I'm big about intention. It's like, well, why are we doing this in the first place? Why, why is being kind to myself important? Why is well-being important? So set your intentions and then follow through on it. Um, kindness, compassion goes with the forgiveness and the, and the um, speak kindly. Do that with yourself, also with others, and it benefits everything. It benefits everyone and everything. And I suppose finally is practice. Just keep doing some one thing for your well-being daily, one thing, and then you can build it. You can build it into two things and so on and so forth. Um, lovely quote, resilience is based on compassion for ourselves as well as compassion for others. And um, I'm a big fan of the Dalai Lama. <laughs> he says, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Um, good. If I don't know if anyone has any final questions. I know Julie wanted to wrap up with something. Yes, no, I mean, we, we will put the, um, the handout in the, the floor platform, but if you want to receive um, the, um, we're going to put the slides in, the, um, in the, the floor platform, but if you want to receive the slides and other resources, and, uh, and also we have upcoming uh, white papers coming up, uh, and we have one uh, that we are drafting on uh, resilience and entrepreneurs. Uh, so if you're interested in all that, uh, please uh, click on the link I just posted on the, the discussion board uh, so we, I can know uh, who to send the, the slides and all the resources to. Great. Um, and what we've presented will also be on this platform as well, is that right? Yes, the slides, uh, I can uh, upload them on the floor platform, yes. Yeah. So you need to um, go. For the other. Yeah. So in your platform, you need to go in the little tab called handouts. Uh, you know, on the left side, you have uh, stage, lobby, lounge, VIP, handouts. Um, so that's where you can find the handouts. Totally good. Um, any final thoughts from people that have come up? Let's check the. Iran says the form isn't working. So. Hey. Um, oh. Um, <laughs> can't keep it to yourself, Julie. Oh my it's god! It says you need permission. Oh no, what's that? Oh no, okay, going there, changing permission right now. What is this? Thank you, Iran. Well, you You're our, uh, our savior. Huh? You've been uh, active on the chat, letting us know a lot of things. So yeah. Thank you for being appreciated. Yeah. Uh, from my side, I just want to, you know, say a few thank yous. I want to say thank you to Julie for being my um, technical producer and also, you know, sharing some of her own experiences and insights. Um, I think that makes it real. And thank you to each and everyone who's joined. Um, I wish I knew more about you and the work you're doing, but, but by the very fact that you're here at the conference attending this um, this session, Says a, says a lot. So thank you. I hope it's been valuable. And yeah, let's keep doing this. We all need to keep doing this. Um, but with a lot of soothe, <laughs> a lot of balance and 
patience and compassion. Yes, and of course, if you're interested to know more about Mowgli Mentoring, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, either on the floor platform. Uh, I think there is a VIP or booth. Uh, sorry, um, uh, I'm not uh, exactly sure, but yeah, I think you can connect me uh, through the platform. And uh, and of course, don't hesitate to contact me uh, via our Mowgli Mowgli contact. So uh, on the slides, I put I'll put we'll put our email addresses. So don't hesitate to to reach out. Okay, so I think that's us done. Yes. Um, well done, Richard. Uh, thank, thank you very you much. <laughs> Good luck to everyone. We're going to quit the stage and enjoy the rest of the conference as well. Yes. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye.